Hello there, this is uh, part two of uh, Project Jeep. This will be the final part of this project. Going to get this painted and hopefully pretty quick today. Done a lot of the prep work already. It's been jammed. Um, a lot of the little pieces have been painted. Um, it's an old Jeep. I'm not putting a lot into it. I'm not doing a high quality job. I'm going with a uh, an army green and a flat clear coat because um, I didn't feel like doing a lot of body work and no shine hides dents. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to use a tool I've never used before, a wallpaper brush. We'll, uh, halfway through the paint job, we'll uh, find out what this does. This ought to be interesting. Enjoy! Oh, look what I found while I was prepping. The last person that painted this did a lousy prep job. The paint underneath is still shiny. They didn't even sand it enough. The clear coat is just coming right off. Look at that. I have to take this out as far as it'll go. Otherwise, anything I put over it's going to fall off too. And it'll be more likely to fall off. Look at that. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody's a hack. This was probably at a used car lot somewhere. I don't know how many people have owned this thing. And this was just a quick, a quick uh, resale red paint job. And, but this is all clear here. There, I finally found an area where it sticks. I'm just gonna chase it out to where it sticks and feather out the edge. And that's it. Because I'm not going for anything great here. But I do want what I'm doing to st stick on and not peel, blow off in the wind when I'm going down the road. Look at this. It started right around this edge where they didn't they left that shiny. That's why uh, we usually take all the pieces off a car, but this isn't worth it. In fact, it's older. All the everything I would loosen up would probably break off. And this is just a quickie paint job, but unbelievable how badly this was prepped. That's all shiny paint underneath. It's like <laughs> <laughs> Did it around the door lock too. I kind of scraped. Oh, it looks like I can chase that for a little bit too. Okay, prepping this might take a little longer than I thought. Well, I ended up having to go to 180 grit to get that feather edge in there. And then 320. Going, taking it down to a 400 grit. I'm using a solid darker color with a flat clear over it. Normally I'd take it down to a 600 grit for a metallic or something, but uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. That there was that whole area was completely shiny. Then I blew the dust off with the air gun, and everything in there just blew off. <laughs> That's hopefully the worst of it, because I want to just get this thing painted. I'm not doing. I'm just going to mask everything off. I wanted to take these flares off, but the first bolt. I tried to loosen, just snapped off, so I'm not playing around with it. Just gonna mask them off. I've already done stuff like the grill, so that'll that whole area will mask off easy. Um, these are a great source of dust when you're painting one of these, but that's already masked off. I'll just seal that area, and now it's time to get it in the spray booth. Mask it off. Get uh, yesterday evening's job out of the booth. See, this is how you do it. You take all the, everything off. Take the handles off so you don't get those, those shiny edges and everything. But this is also a fairly expensive quality job. It's a Volkswagen Passat. There's a couple specks of dust in it. I'm going to sand those out, polish. So there's that kind of job, and then there's this kind of job.
all masked off, ready for the base coat. It's a good covering base coat. It's a, it's a solvent base coat, one of the last that I have of that because we've switched to waterborne base coats. Um, yeah, it's good covering, should be done in two coats. And then uh, I'll be ready for uh, the next stage of this. Here's my base coat. This is actually a Sickens color map location, uh, 441 G1. It's a, uh, I was doing an under hood color and I found this. I said, hey, that would be a cool, uh, kind of a matte green color. So here it is. This has been mixed for a while, so I'm just straining it. Make sure it's not too bad. When I'm done with this, I bought a, a quart of uh, Auto Clear Matte. Um, just put a hardener and an activator in it, and uh, it dries dull. No gloss at all, which is perfect for a beat up old Jeep. Put my trusty side jig gun and off we go. Just gonna tack the Jeep. I've already wiped it down with some cleaner and I'm gonna tack it off. And uh, oh, while I'm here, uh, Pissa 2001, I know you're gonna like this. Uh, Peppa Cat Keith, uh, Kite 3691, and uh, Teal Times too. I think you guys will get a kick out of this. I've enjoyed your videos, by the way. Really cool stuff. All right. one more time that's where my wood grain is going to go I think I'll probably break it off right here run some paper down um, I'm also going to do I'm going to lay another color here first and then tape that off and that'll be like a just like a, a break off between the two colors it'll make it look a little sharper I might just put some black there and lay some uh, metal flake over it I'm not sure I've got a couple of used things in there that I can just dust on there. We'll see what, what I come up with. 
Oh, once again, Pissa, that's so cool that you're going, you're going to do the 18 van. I can't get over that. That's going to be awesome. Okay, I laid black down. Now I'm going to put something on this angle pipe, and then I'll mask that area off. And we'll see how well uh, waterborne paint sticks to solvent paint. All right, I've never done this before, so let's see what happens. Um, there's a guy on uh, YouTube, Ed Hubbs Pinstriping. I think I caught this idea from him. It looks pretty simple. Let's give it a shot. Well, yep, never seen anything like that on a Jeep before. Now I'm going to airbrush in some, uh, some knots and uh, see how that goes. It's time to untape. Does that look like wood? Can't do a stock paint job. Don't like stock paint jobs. Got to do something different every time. Usually I do flames. This is new. <laughs> it's not actual wood colors. It's kind of a monotone metallic kind of wood. But I think it's going to work good with this, uh, with the whole color scheme I'm doing here.